Today, what I'm going to do is less talking and we'll do more practical work. Like my friend Max Holloway always says, numbers don't lie. People lie, men lie, women lie, but numbers don't lie. So today, we'll just run some numbers that you can easily apply to your life and see and plan accordingly before you land in Canada. So that even though you package your application, when you get here, at least you can reduce your stress level and be able to survive when you, you are here. So for the purpose of this discussion, I'm going to look at three different scenarios. And we'll look at people who are going to three different provinces. And in terms of the provinces, I'm picking three of them. And these will be Ontario, British Columbia, and Saskatchewan. I picked Saskatchewan because they have the minimum wage, Ontario because most people go there, and British Columbia because they have the highest minimum wage. Before we get into it, now let's look at some numbers here. In terms of minimum wage, you realize that if you're going to Alberta, it's going to be $15 an hour. If you look at it, you realize that British Columbia has the highest minimum wage, whilst Saskatchewan has the minimum at $13 an hour. But one thing that most people don't pay attention to is also the taxes. So depending on which province that you are going to, you'll be paying different, you have different form of tax that you have to also account for. In Canada, there are three different taxes that you are going to experience. The first one is GST and HST. GST is the taxes that you pay on goods and services. So any amount of money that is coming into your pocket, there will be some amount of tax on it. Then there's the PST. This is normally the provincial sales tax. So you, you realize that in terms of the tax system, not every province at least has all three. Some of them have PST, others have the GST, others have the HST. But what we'll be working with the, with the total tax rate that will apply to the amount of money that you make. Unless you decide that you're going to do a cash job where the money will come straight into your hands, and wouldn't be paid straight into your bank account, which will be illegal anyways. So at least, depending on which province that you, you are going to, you know how much the minimum wage is. Alberta is 15, British Columbia is 16.65, Manitoba is 13.5, New Brunswick is 13.75. So what, what I've done with this sheet is now, on this side, I've put in all the minimum wage for every province. And on this side, there are the taxes that you end up paying in the long run. Then on this sheet, I've customized it such that depending on which province that you are going to, when we select the province, the respective minimum wage and taxes will be applied after you've inputted the number of hours that you want to do. So let's get into some numbers here. So first things first, so we pick Saskatchewan here as the province that we are going to you see that automatically the minimum wage is adjusted here. And I put some notes here on about the minimum wage in case you want to read about it. Then in terms of expenses, the yellow ones are basically the, the things that you can adjust yourself so that the calculation will be done automatically for you. And I've done this for you so you don't have to redo it yourself. I will share this particular sheet so that you can download and do your own calculation. So you prepare accordingly before you land. So we assume here somebody who is paying 15,000 uh, 15, Canadian dollars as tuition fee annually, and this money will be taken up front. So you have to plan for it. Then we assume a rent of $600, mobile phone bill of $35. And the funny thing is, if you are in Canada, $35, you are getting just only voice. You are not even getting data. Even if you get data, you get about 500 MB. So you have to be mindful of that. So this is like the bare minimum plan that you can be on. Then utilities here, I'm assuming things like phone bill, other things, home internet, and all other things being in there. We assume about $75. A bus pass of $40. Then food, I'm assuming $150 here. So basically, you, your, for your groceries, your eating out, and all those things, we are assuming $150 here. Then now, when you come to the gross income, the assumption that I'm making here is there are 24 hours in a day. I'm assuming that you want to be fully rested. So you will spend six hours at least sleeping. Then you will spend two hours at least committing because you are here and possibly you are bussing. You will spend one hour to bus to your, uh, your work and one hour to bus back. That's two hours of busing in a day. Then also because you are a student, you will need to go to school. You will need to do your assignments. So I'm assuming that you will spend eight hours in a day 
at least on school. So that's at least sitting in class and doing your assignments. So if you add that to the other eight hours, then that means 16 hours of your day is actually gone. And 24 minus the 16, you will be left with eight hours to work in the day. So even though you've been allowed to work as many hours as you want, the truth is you are not a robot. There's a limit to how much hours you can actually work in a day. And I'm assuming rest on Sunday because you cannot overwork yourself without falling sick or at least your body breaking down. So I'm assuming that you decide to pick one day to rest and we are picking one day in this case to rest, which is Sunday. So when it comes to the hours, I'm assuming in total you want to do 40 hours in a week. So that 40 hours has been broken down over the, five, the six days that you can work. Out of that total week, you will make around $520. A month, you are making around $2,080 because you are working 80 hours on a $13 minimum wage. Annually, that will add up to about $27,560. So depending on the province that this person is going to Saskatchewan, the tax that will be taken out weekly will be $57. Monthly will be $229 and annually will be $3,000. That means their net income every month will now be around $1,851 and annually will be $24,528. If we now take out the expenses that the person incurred, which was $25,800, now that person is already down by $1,200 and 72 dollars even after working 40 hours in a, in a week and if the person is possibly studying for more than a year course that means at the beginning of the year two they need to come up with another 15,000 to pay for their tuition fee so now they're already down 1,272 if you add that to the 15,000 that they need to come up with they are now down about 16,272 dollars now this is for someone going to saskatchewan let's assume for the same scenario this that person decides not to go to saskatchewan but decides that i'm going to ontario what we see here is for the same expenses that person is that person ends up with how much two thousand seven hundred and eighty eight at the end of the year and if the person decides to go to british columbia he ends up with three thousand three hundred and ninety seven so how can this person reduce his expenses and possibly end up being able to pay himself through studying in Canada? We realize that one of the major expenses that the person is incurring here is tuition fee. Now, if we decide to change the tuition fee to 10000 here, what happens? At the end of the year, the person is left with about $8,000. That means he can cut down on other expenses and be able to afford tuition, and he'll be down by 1000 It's better to be down by 1000 to be down by... 16,000 that we saw earlier. However, if the tuition fee is now 5,000, what happens? Now this person is able to pay himself through studying in Canada because at the end of the year one, he's left with 13,397. And after paying his tuition fee of 5,000, he's still left with about 8,397 to spare. I don't know whether you see it here. So just changing the tuition fee See how much it has changed the person's ability to pay himself through studying in Canada. Now let's apply the same scenario to the same the, the person going to Ontario. He's still left with 7,000 at the end of the year. If that person is going to Saskatchewan, he's still left with 3,000 at the end of year one. So as you can see from this sheet, just changing your tuition fee can actually make a difference. And sometimes the province that you are going to also has an impact on how much money you can save in the long run. In this particular scenario, I'm assuming the person is working full time, which is 40 hours every week. So basically the person is working himself to the bone to be able to make money to pay himself through school. And I'll leave a link to this Excel sheet in the description column. So you can go there and at least download and also check for yourself. You can input the tuition fee that you are going to pay for the school that you are going to. And also put some assumptions for the cost that you are going to incur for the other things that are available there. Then you can easily adjust the hours and see how much hours you need to make to be able to pay yourself while studying. So my advice is, if funds is an issue for you and you still want to study in Canada, 
there are a few changes that you need to do to at least make it easy for you to pay yourself through studying in Canada with your peace of mind and not be stressed when you get to Canada. One, at least have your first semester tuition fee or full year tuition fee paid off before you even fly out of your home country because that will give you peace of mind. Two, consider borrowing from the three Fs that anybody who has started business will tell you to borrow from. And these three Fs are friends, family, and fools to at least finance your education for the first year. And you can speak to these people that you pay them back after a year in Canada so that you can have your peace of mind and relax when you get here and not be rushed or stressed when you start studying. Three, consider the option of staying with a family or friend if that's available to you because it will go a long way to cut down on your expenses when you get to Canada. Four, consider borrowing from institutions that possibly empower to finance your education. And this is not a sponsored video, but I've seen people who are even working and making their own money still go ahead and borrow from empower to study in Canada and pay it off later post-graduation. And that gave them their peace of mind when they were, were students. Five, look for external sponsorships or scholarships from your institution that you'll be studying in if that is available to you because it will also help you to cut down on your expenses. Six is to pick your province wisely because it can easily impact how much money you make and how much tax you make and even the cost of living when you are in Canada. Seven is to choose your course wisely. If migration is your ultimate goal and you are not basically here to study to be in academia, then you should choose your course wisely. At least pick a course that has a lower tuition fee so that you don't have to work to spend most of your money paying your tuition fee. And you can easily pay yourself through studying in Canada without any recourse to external funding. So with the new change that has been introduced, this is my advice of what to do if you actually want to be able to pay yourself through studying in Canada without any recourse to external funding or even compromising your studies when you get here. And if you got value out of this video, can you hit the subscribe button to join this family as we learn together on this journey. And don't forget to hit the like button so YouTube will see value in this video and suggest it to other people who need it. And kindly share this video to family and friends who also need it. Till the next video, catch you.